created live on Fireside. Welcome, I'm Lori Lee Binstock, and this is a Trauma Survivor Thrivers Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me live on Fireside Chat, where you can be a part of the conversation as my virtual audience. I am your host, Lori Lee Binstock. Everyone has an opportunity to ask me or our guest questions by requesting to hop on stage or sending a message in the chat box. I will try to get to you, but I do ask that everybody be respectful. Today's guest is Laura Lynn. She is a hypnotherapist, energy healer, and medical intuitive. Laura. Thank you so much for joining me. Are you joining me from Hawaii? Oh, hi, Lori Lee. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, aloha. <laughs> aloha to you too. Thank you. Well, you know, there are so, mo- so many modalities to healing trauma, and most of them are holistic and effective, but hypnotherapy is one of those that has I feel like has gone under the radar, something that's also effective. Can you kind of explain why you think that is? You know, ever since I got into hypnotherapy, it has been under the radar. Like, even when it's portrayed in movies, like, I don't know if you've seen Get Out um, or Hypnotic on Netflix. Mm. Get, um, I think it's called Black Box on Amazon Prime. Um, oh, and Betty. Have you have you seen Betty? No, I haven't seen Betty. I, now I have to go watch it. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um but yeah, you know, all of these movies portray hypnotherapy and hypnosis to be very bad. And it's because of how powerful it is that you can heal yourself in this way that, um, you know, it's it's even stronger than regular therapy. And mm-hmm. it just allows you to get to that root cause of why you feel the way you feel, get to the root cause of the trauma that you've been carrying all your life. And um if I just wish a lot of people would know more about how powerful hypnotherapy is. You know, I, I have a, a podcaster friend. She has a podcast, Healing with Karen. And, you know, it's a great podcast. Everyone should check it out. Um, She talks about her own experience with hypnotherapy. It is extremely imp- powerful. Um, And I think with the, a, a lot of modalities to heal trauma, because you really have to like, kind of dive into the trauma. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that's a lot really scary. There is actually a um, a meme that I saw the other day. It was a person standing at the edge of a cliff and mm-hmm. it was someone flicking them off and it was like ayahuasca. And then at the bottom was someone catching them and it was like also ayahuasca. So I feel like that could go <laughs> the same way with hypnotherapy. Like you it, it will really knock you into oblivion until, it, but it will also heal you if you're you're willing. And I think uh, that can be the scary part of it. Um, I wanted to ask, how did you get into hypnotherapy? Because you had, you have your own experience with it as well. Yeah, um, it was quite a journey. So what really ignited all of this was a divorce. Um, I was had my second son. He was six weeks old when my husband at the time wanted a divorce. I actually had to go to my postpartum appointment that morning. And, oh, gosh, Mm -hmm. it was just, it was, I just felt helpless, hopeless. Um, All the anxiety came up and like, oh, my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Like, this is all I know. And I kind of gave it up to God and I decided to, you know, give him what he wanted and do it in the most graceful way possible and slowly but surely, like little little things started coming in front of me, and um, that's when I became on my spiritual journey, my healing journey. And I came across this woman who did a healing on me, and I read her bio, and she's like, "Oh, I'm a hypnotherapist," and she went to the specific school, and so I looked it up, and they did like a free a free course to see if you liked it, and I did. And so that's how I actually started doing hypnotherapy. And then like six months in, I went to another school um, in Britain. So I I got to learn two different styles and I graduated uh, within a month apart from each school. And uh, it's been such an amazing, amazing journey of 
because in learning hypnotherapy, you also have to practice with other students. And that's when a lot of things started to unfold for me. And it was um, very, you know, it was just amazing. What did the hypnotherapy show you? Okay, well, like the <laughs> first, the first time I ever spoke about my uh, childhood sexual abuse, I was about 34 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, of course, everything happened after, you know, the, the divorce. And I don't know if you ever heard of Gene Keys. It's sort of like, um, you know, like how people do astrology and they look at natal charts. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just another way for you to learn more about yourself on deeper levels. So like that with human design. So Gene Keys is just another aspect of it. And this guy did my reading and he looked at my childhood and he was like, did something happen to you? Um, and I just started bawling because this is the first time like someone brought it up. And I was like, yes, I was I was sexually abused. And, and mm. from then, um, it was just such a relief because I've been holding on to it. I d had never told a soul until that moment. And um, then I went when I went to hypnotherapy school, um, it's funny because at first you look at some things like confidence. And when you kind of like go down the rabbit hole of why you're not confident, um, you don't you don't know what's going to end up of what is connected to the root cause. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, thing, the surface level things that I was trying to shift or heal, root cause was my, you know, experience of sexual abuse in childhood. And so, um, you know, I also had to be vulnerable with these other students that I had, I didn't know, like, and they're from all over the world. And, and I kind of just surrendered because I was just tired of holding on to all this pain. And um, so that's what unfolded for me in majority of the hypnotherapy sessions that I did with other students to get to, you know, where I'm at today of being a hypnotherapist myself. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, it does take a lot to be vulnerable. And I think that is kind of the key when do, doing any trauma healing, because if you're so reluctant to, to kind of let yourself just be or, or, or be in the experience, it can, it can, you know, it, it can be just hard and, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I do want so I, I mentioned earlier, Betty, like you were saying that th there was a lot where um, hypnotherapy is kind of portrayed in a very negative way or negative mm -hmm. light. Um, and in Betty, it's like, it's actually a show about um, it's a doc. It's like a, I don't want to say documentary. It's, it's like a retelling of the Texas ax murderer, um, mm -hmm. the woman who killed her best friend. And she actually goes into, she, she goes to a hypnotherapist where she kind of discovered like there was a trigger that happened with her friend where it wasn't that she wanted to murder her friend, but there was a trigger. Um, it was like something, a, a similar thing that her friend did that her mom did that was very triggering for mm -hmm. her from her trial to trauma where mm -hmm. she kind of blacked out and just, she had an ax and then, you know, what, so-and-so happened. Um, so they knew that she, she actually was the murderer, but they didn't know they, they were there. The whole thing was, you know, was it premeditated or whatever? Mm -hmm. So they actually brought the hypnotherapist in. And obviously a lot of people are like, Oh, this hypnotherapist is it's, you know, it's yeah. woohoo stuff. Um, but to me, I feel like it, that legitimately is real. And actually she, I think she's living um, somewhere, and she's actually, I, I don't know if she's practicing as a hypnotherapist, but she is some sort of therapist. I was looking her up. I was like, this is very interesting how hypnotherapy can like really do that to you. Um, could you actually talk about how does hypnotherapy actually work? Yeah. So it's, um, so we have our conscious mind and, you know, our subconscious mind, people don't really know too much about it, but it's like the most powerful thing that you have, mm -hmm. like as your mind, um, everything that you've ever experienced since you were born and you know if you if you want to get a little bit more deeper than this but we'll just hit the surface um you know you can also do past life work mm -hmm. in hypnotherapy um 
so because there's your conscious mind there's your subconscious mind which is where we do the hypnotherapy work but you can also access your super conscious mind um for the past life stuff but anywho um everything you ever experienced in this lifetime even when you're in your your mother's womb Mm -hmm. like the feelings she felt um the things that you could hear as a baby like that affected you coming into this world the experiences you had affected you the um, energy i yeah, right the energy, the energy exactly. that your mom may have passed on mm-hmm. um yeah go ahead i i just yeah. I, that was something that i had discovered as well <laughs> okay awesome right because when i started discovering all these things it was like my mind was being blown i was like <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh right but then but then again not everybody's ready for this information exactly um, so all we can do is just you know honor people on their journey and hopefully one day that they'll start resonating with this and you know get on their healing journey as well but um back to what i was saying it's like especially when we go through things that are very traumatic um there's parts within us that hold on to that for us so that we can somewhat live normal lives in society, right? Like a lot of my experiences, um, kind of like skeletons in the closet, in a sense, that's similar to hiding things in our subconscious mind. But, you know, like how you said about Betty, like she was triggered. And now Mm -hmm. when we get triggered by certain things that we've already experienced, it's these parts within us that are trying to protect us. So she got triggered. This part came through. It was like, no, I'm, I don't want to experience this again. So she protected her, even though it was a very bad act that she did. But, right. um, you know, a lot of these times, it's just these parts that are trying to protect us from, you know, experiencing that painful, um, you know, emotion and experience again. So... Uh, the subconscious mind is powerful and a lot of the times um, you know our behaviors our living beliefs are in there so if you're able to get into the subconscious mind reprogram you know the, whatever beliefs you have then and because a lot of the times from age zero to seven is where we're just intaking all this information mm-hmm. it's like um, where our subconscious mind is really open to receiving because when we come into this world, we don't really know what's happening. So we're just intaking everything. So from your family, from your, you know, your friends going to school, just watching the news, um, those become your beliefs on how you're, you, how you think you're supposed to live. And um, that's the reason why sometimes people are like, well, this is just the way that I am, mm-hmm. but that's not the case. You can always change who you are if you want to better yourself if you want to heal that pain if you want to shift your behaviors um yeah yeah i it's 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 when you think when you talk about you know like you were saying about you know even in the womb you you, you can you, you feel like the energy you feel like for me it was very much you know i was kind of an accident I was an accident, you know, and my, my parents actually talk about, they did when I was younger about being an accident constantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I felt that energy as a, as a infant, obviously I can't take in that the language of what they're saying, but I can feel, you know, mm-hmm. I was able to feel that energy and felt unwanted and felt unworthy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's kind of how I grew up. You know, it's, it's literally taken me, you know, I'm 39 now. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't find healing until several years ago. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, and I, so I've been feeling unworthy for the majority of my life. Right. And so, I'm, you know, it's just taking that, that, that healing. Um, but it's very, is it very true that if, you know, that when, during hypnotherapy, it can access, like you said, your subconscious mind, things that you don't even realize what was there. Mm -hmm. Like, like, I guess things that you could have blacked out because it was too traumatic at the time. Yes, that is so true. So one of my experiences, um, uh, one of these guys, he was, he offered, he's a coach. He offered me a free session uh, because he was living on another island in Hawaii. So it's kind of like, oh, you're from Hawaii too. Oh, let's get together and I'll give you a free session. I'm like, oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. um, Yeah. And he wasn't even a hypnotherapist, but 
because I've been doing this for a while, like I'm able to like drop into my subconscious mind and access things. Mm -hmm. And so as he was taking me through this exercise, um, we went to a place where, where it was like a skeleton in a closet. Like I ended up um, in front of a door and I had a key and I was the only person that was able to open this door. And it was my choice to open the door or not. And behind that was like all the parts of me that had experienced being sexually abused. It's like mm. every time that happened, like a part like fractured off mm. and like was put in the closet. Like, no, I don't want to see this. Um, you don't exist. Mm. And so I was like, you know what? We're going in the closet because <laughs> I'm I'm not going to like, like when I'm on my healing journey, like, I'm just going like as fast as I can go. Like I'm healing whatever I can heal, mm -hmm. um, bring it on. Um, so I went in there and as I opened the door, it's like I felt all of this like immense energy of like all of the experiences that they were holding on to for me. Right. These are all like my inner children that mm. had fractured off because they experienced it and they got hit, put in the closet. And so with that, um, because I was also doing energy healing, like I went into the center of the room um, and then I called upon, you know, God, divine, universe, source, creator, whatever you believe and my angels. And we just like, like a light came down, like through me and through my heart expanded out to all the hearts of all these little children that were in that room so that I could heal them. And uh, it was such an incredible experience. And um and then they went from that room to a playground, like and mm. just playing with each other. So, um, so that that was that experience. And he was like, "Wow, you know, I've done this with so many other people, and like that happens so fast. Usually, people don't even go in the closet, and it would take them like many sessions for them to even like walk through that door." I was like, "Yeah, I'm kind of dedicated to to myself right now <laughs> <laughs> and like my healing journey." So. If you can bring it up and we can face it and heal it, then that's what I'm going to do. Wow. You know, you talking about that kind of, you know, these parts, you know, I, I'm in internal family systems therapy. Oh, okay. Nice. And we talk about a lot of parts <laughs> and the parts yes. that are fractured and the parts that are broken off, the parts that I need to, that um, individually need healing. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. Because I, I feel like that, I, I you know, I feel like all trauma healing really, it, it it's really focused on different parts and accessing your your subconscious, um, whether it be through hypnotherapy. I've also, I don't know if, if you're aware, but I've done a lot, not a lot, but I have done um, several sessions of psychedelic healing. Oh. And it nice. and it's, it, it's like that. I feel like when you're say, talking about like, imagining the store imagining you know i can open this and if i open this what's going to be back there and it, it's, mm -hmm. it's all of these things all of the skeletons um that are there that you can just you know you're like that's what i need to heal that's what i need to heal um i think i, I think for hypnotherapy you you really have to want to to access that stuff um mm -hmm. like i said with my friend karen she it's really interesting listening to her because it did get a little intense. There were times where it was so intense she had, she was like, I can't do this right now. I need to take a break from it. Yeah. Um, Cause you're really, really accessing some, some real, real trauma that you've experienced mm -hmm. and you're kind of have, you have to experience it again. And I think that that can be really, really tough. Um, you are also an energy healer. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that and how does that work together with hypnotherapy? Yeah. So um, it was funny because when I was going through that school in Britain, they similarly like said words that would like move energy, but they weren't doing like to them. It was just we're saying words to move to move this emotions out. But they were actually doing hypno I mean, energy healing. So it was kind of funny that. I was like, these people don't even know they're doing energy healing, but um, <laughs> because there's, they're keeping it more on the practical side of hypnotherapy, right? Um, a lot of people can believe that more than energy healing. Mm. Um, but 
Yes. So I went through another school. Um, her name is Crystal Hughes. And what's, what's funny is that she went to the same hypnotherapy that I went to, which was the first one that I told you that I came across of. Like she Mm -hmm. went to the exact same school and she's also an energy healer. So she created this, um, this modality called integrative soul technology, which kind of brings the best of both worlds of hypnosis and energy healing. And it's similar to the parts healing, like, for for that modality will like connect with the part that needs to be shift and we'll pull that part out and then from there we'll do the the energy healing part so it's like part hypnotherapy part energy healing bringing it together best of both best of both worlds and really just um you know bringing those fractured parts of your soul to back to wholeness do is is the energy healing that you do is that similar to like reiki um similar yes it's in the same realm Uh, with energy healing there's so many different modalities out there uh it's quite amazing and um yeah so so yes it is similar to to reiki i I, I know reiki is really um, popular with when it comes to energy healing what so what are some of the things that you do like for example um, well, so I've also taken like, um, a medical intuitive course, mm. so I'm able to connect with people's higher self and sort of, um, kind of bring my guides and their guides. Um, I work with Archangel Raphael. He's, you know, the Archangel, uh, the, the healer. And, you know, we kind of look at the body and see like, okay, what is the most important thing that needs to be worked on right now? Because there's so many things going on with the body. You can't get everything at once uh, because that's a lot of, that's a lot for a a person to handle, right? Unless they've been in like the realm of energy healing and they've done Mm -hmm. a lot of energy healing work. It's like kind of baby stepping people through healing processes whether it's hypnotherapy or energy healing. Um, but, the, you know, that's just one thing that I do. I kind of do a lot of different things. So once I tapped into this spiritual realm and energy healing, I just, like, went everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like I did I did a little Reiki work. Um, awesome. Someone, I would, when I, typically before I, you know, I start my period at around that time of the month, my hormones mm. and my energy is just, off the charts. Like I, I, I struggle with premenstrual dysphoric disorder, which is like, a, it's, it's not PMS, but it's like, it, it's PMDD and it could be a little bit more serious, you know, um, to be honest, like whenever I was dealing with my trauma, um, I've had some, su- you know, trigger warning. I had um, a lot of suicidal ideation and it, it was typically before my period. Um, mm-hmm. And I think there re- there's also a connection there with my trauma. I'm also a childhood sexual abuse survivor. And so there there's trauma there that I'm working with um, my, my internal family systems therapist. Um, mm-hmm. But before about a week or two before I would have an energy or a Reiki practitioner come to my house and and work with my energy because I feel like I hold a lot of negative energy Mm -hmm. around, around, um, that time of the month. And so, um, it, it was really, really helpful. I I feel like you can feel immediately like a relief. Mm -hmm. And, and so, yeah. And, and you, you know, you mentioned medical intuitive. Could you, could you elaborate on what is a medical intuitive? Uh, yeah, um, it's really just tapping into your intuition and helping people to energetically move the densities in their body, uh, wherever it is, where it could be, you know, the mind, the heart, um, you know, the womb. And but it's more of like just being a conduit for, you know, a spirit to work through you as as you're doing this work. Like like I just move my hands like I can do this remotely with you know someone across the world and then like they just lead me to to do what needs to be done in like removing dense energies bringing high vibrational energy in uh to help heal whatever needs to be healed at that moment in time Mm -hmm. 
Wow. So you can actually work with somebody, even though they're not with you and you like you, can you feel their energy from across the world? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's, it's really like connecting in with, with their higher self for what, and my higher self is kind of like, okay, tell me what this person needs right now. Cause you know, we all have, it's like when we're healing, there's layers of healing. Even when we do hypnotherapy, there's deeper layers to go through. Um, but as you go through each layer, it just helps that much more. Like for me, um, I had endometriosis. And so like, and it, and I can distinctly remember when this came into my life and why. Um, mm. Because my husband that, that I divorced from with my two kids, um, before we had our kids, he cheated on me. Um, I attracted a lot of cheaters in my life. Mm. Um, my dad was a cheater. So if you kind of look at your childhood, you'll see the patterns of the partners that you attract. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of it also was cheaters and abandonment. Um, so anywho, uh, he cheated on me. And I had this, I had this habit because I also felt unworthy um, of taking them back. You know what I mean? Instead of mm. making those boundaries and loving myself, like I don't deserve to be treated like this, I right. would take them back. And then my body was like, you know what, Laura, <laughs> you're not learning your lesson. So we're going to like the body is a warning system. So we're going to, you know, manifest this element for you to help you to recognize like what's happening. And of course, if you're not aware of that, then you're not able to get to the root cause of why that's happening. Um, so I was dealing with that for for years, every time I had my period, it was such a painful experience. I would have blood and mucus come out of my stool during my period. So the only mm. times that that was done was when I was pregnant because I don't have my period. But as soon as the baby came out, right back to the same pattern. Oh my goodness. And once I got into this energy healing and this hypnotherapy, because on top of my childhood trauma, I had to heal all of the pain that I went through on my relationships. Um, and slowly but surely like it got better and I'm pregnant now <laughs> oh wow congratulations <laughs> thank you thank you but before my like before I you know was pregnant like like I stopped having those issues like it stopped being painful um and 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 that's what happens like when there's deep trauma like there's going to be so many layers to kind of like remove but as you're going through it and you're removing it, you're getting better as time moves forward. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, especially if it's something deep like that. Um, but just know it, it is getting better over time. You got to just keep on moving forward and kind of choosing you and choosing to heal these parts of you that have been holding on to all this pain for you. You know, that's really interesting. I've had, I've had other energy heal healers on the show and they talk a lot about, um, and for them too, you know, they have autoimmune diseases um, that, you know, modern day medicine was just not working. And then mm -hmm. they were able to heal this energy. And I don't know if necessarily what, what they what they were dealing with, whatever autoimmune disease went away, mm -hmm. um, but it was either manageable without medication. Um, but it's, it's, it's just the, this, energy I guess they that that they are trying to to heal it's like you said it's the body that's telling you okay something's wrong with what's going on and so we'll mm -hmm. just we'll just tell you what to do we'll, we'll, we're just gonna have to give you a warning sign can hypnotherapy actually break into that like yes definitely um you can you know get into the subconscious mind and kind of talk to that part of your body that's holding on to that element and kind of be like, okay, why, like, why is it here? And kind of really digging deep into the root cause of that. And then, you know, a lot of the times it's just the acknowledgement, right? It's, it's like, okay, Laura's taking the time to figure out why this is happening. And, and then of course, helping those parts to release that pain, to release why they're holding on to, and also receiving the messages and the lessons mm. and the blessings of why that's happening, right? Because, again, all these parts are trying to protect us. 
and they you know they want to they want us to lead better lives and they're you know so they're really there to to help you because you know for me with my endometriosis and having those painful periods every month like it was just excruciating it's like I felt like I was being stabbed um Mm. very sharp pain and it was you know me needing to me needing to honor my own self and to stop allowing men to you know treat me that way like I was nothing and when I kind of took my power back that's when it started healing Mm. yeah I'm, I'm just wondering like if you know if someone who's dealing with like stress induced you know ailments which I feel like that's for like many autoimmune diseases it's it it's they're really spurred on by stress and being able, the awareness of the stress, which I think is amazing that hypnotherapy can actually kind of crack that open, Mm -hmm. um, that you can actually really start healing, not, not just mentally, but physically. And I, and I think there's, there's this um, huge importance of this connection to your mental and physical state. Like it, like, I feel like maybe now I don't even know how, maybe it's just in my circle. Cause I, you know, my circle of people who I know and I hear, you know, it's, it's all about healing mentally, but it's like, there's this, there's this absolute, there's this connection. And I think we need to learn how to, be it to integrate it all in our healing and in in the medical world in the medical field i feel like it's it's very there's very a lot of focus on physical and we we're not getting to the root of it all and and it's really a pain because it's like oh insurance will take take care of you know physical ailments much more easily than it would take care of any mental ailments when when they really really go together yeah yeah, that's true. I mean, um, there's definitely a connection, you know, with your mind and your physical body. And it's kind of like, for example, when I had my, f- so both of my children were C-sections, emergency C-sections. Mm-hmm. And with my first one, like I was walking around the house, like hunched over for like two weeks, just feeling like I was in pain. And, and so my second one I was like I refuse to be like that again so I kind of told myself I told my mind I was like I was like I'm healing and and this was before I even like got into hypnotherapy energy healing I was just telling myself um that this is what it was going to be so Mm. when I was in the hospital like after I had my c-section the very next day I was up and I was walking so yeah. it really is like the words that you t- tell yourself. And that's why we have to also watch like our self-talk, right? Is it more positive mm. or is it negative? And a lot of the time with hypnotherapy, I've done so much work that like my like negative self-talk like is not even there because wow. all these parts I've shifted. And so all these parts are there to support me in, you know, in whatever I, I want to do in life. And giving me encouragement instead of kind of being like, who are you? And, you know, whatever negative self-talk that, that anyone has. Um, but that's why it's important to, to do hypnotherapy, to learn about the subconscious mind, the power of the mind, the power of you choosing to decide that, okay, I don't want to have this negative self-talk. I'm going to like a negative, um, comment comes through or thought comes through and then you'd be like no I don't accept that I'm shifting that and the more you do that um you know again over time because you've been programmed this way for so long uh, whether it's people projecting their own um, worries onto you and you believing that stuff and it's you just taking control back of your own mind your own life and really choosing what you want to do for yourself that is really interesting because now that I think about it, I, I mean, I, I used to be a bit like big on negative self-talk. I felt, I don't know why. And I now that I'm thinking about it, as you are actually saying those words out loud, I don't really know if I talk to myself that negatively anymore. Like it was nice. just like in every single day, like it was just very um, self-loathing, just mm-hmm. Like, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I, I don't feel like I talk to myself in a negative way anymore. 
And I, uh, wow, you know, I, that was just like a realization that I'm like, oh, ding, ding, ding. That actually, it, it actually works when you shift. And mm -hmm. because I do feel like my life is so much more different than it was, you know, four or five years ago, because I feel like, or maybe four years ago, three years mm -hmm. ago, it was in 2020 when I actually started like healing prior oh, to that nice. i was yeah I, it's so so recent <laughs> no mine was the same like in 2019 is when i on august is when i had my son so in september he asked for the divorce and since then i've been mm. on the healing journey so in 2020 we actually divorced in june so that's when i was like like full speed ahead <laughs> right you're like i all i have all i have to do is heal like all I want to do is heal. It's like you've been through the the hard stuff, and and healing can be hard. You know, it, oh, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like I said, like that that meme that I said. It, it's like kicking you off of a cliff, but then also catching you also at the same time. But it's that that in between that you have to go through that fear mm -hmm. of like falling um, before you get to that that place where you're safe. Um, and so I think, and and you know, I feel like that's that's. A, how it, it is and a lot of people really are reluctant to heal um mm -hmm. because they they're the, there's this fear that they have to go through that fall and that there's no one to catch them or there's nothing to catch them but but it, it can happen it's it's there um yeah is there anything that you would like to add um you know i would just like to say just you know, for people to really kind of look at themselves, do a lot of self introspection and kind of see like, am I happy where I'm at? Am I, am I happy with what I'm doing with my life? Am, am I happy with myself and how I'm being and how I behave and kind of start making those decisions to shift those things that you don't want to be anymore into what you do want to be and what you do want to do. And just really follow your heart. Your heart is like your compass. And because I know, you know, with the mind, you know, there's a lot of chatter sometimes. I remember when I first started meditating, I was like, <laughs> like, there's so much going on in my mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, I thought it was supposed to be quiet. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, as you, you learn a lot al along the way, like now I know how to meditate very well. But I was, it's like really just... Um, choosing what you want for yourself and knowing that you can you can change anything you want about yourself and mm -hmm. you know it's, it, it'll it'll take time because shifting behaviors um like you can do it like you can start to reprogram yourself like on the service level but hypnotherapy gets down on the deep level of changing behaviors and and healing but you know um kind of like when you wake up in the morning and right before you go to sleep, those are the most times that you're um, more open to suggestions. So mm. kind of right before you go to sleep, kind of just tell yourself, you know, the things that, that you want to do or be, or even affirmations, like I am affirmations are super powerful. So say right before you go to sleep and, and then as soon as you wake up and kind of just also like, really get to learn more about yourself like it's so mm. important to focus on you like when I was going through um you know I noticed my pattern of men like there would be someone waiting in the wings and I would just go right to the next one never spending any time on myself never healing anything mm. <laughs> and so after my divorce I was like something's got to change and so I just straight focused on myself focused on my healing and I was like the happiest I've ever been. My ex would come over to pick up the boys and I would be like, thank you for divorcing me because <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I would not be where I'm at mentally, like emotionally, spiritually. Like if you didn't initiate that because I wasn't going to, I would mm -hmm. never leave somebody. And that's the reason why like I didn't throughout my relationships, I didn't honor myself. I, I didn't feel like I was worthy of myself. And so learning to love yourself is the most important thing. Like when you fill up your cup first, 
right. and everyone can get the overflow. But if you're trying to keep on giving, you're eventually going to end up with nothing in your cup and, mm -hmm. and you're still going to try to give, but then you have nothing to give. So right. you need to just give to yourself, learn more about yourself, who you are. You know, a lot of, a lot of people don't know, a lot of people want to know what their purpose is in life. That's something that's, that happens through self-discovery. Like people can't just, you know, people can give you hints. Like as, as I was going through my healing journey, I didn't know I was going to be a healer, an energy healer. Like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> or a hypnotherapist. What? I didn't know that that existed. And as I was dedicated to myself, all of these pieces of the puzzle kept coming right in front of me. And then, and then when I was like, oh, this is what I do. This is what I love. This is my passion. I'm here to help people. Um, wow. So it's really just focusing on you. If, you know, especially if you're trying to find out like, what am I here to do? Or just loving yourself more allows you to raise your vibration. When you raise your vibration, then you start attracting people, situations, yeah. experiences on different levels. And, and sometimes as we go through this journey, like, people are going to fall off people that you have been associated with because they're going to be at the level that they're at unless they're going to do their healing too but it's okay like don't hold yourself back because you want to stay with these people like right. you came to this earth for your soul's evolution not for like like yeah you're here to help people too but not to play small keep yourself down just because you're scared to go by yourself. Sometimes you have to go through that door by yourself to show people the way and then they can go through their own door by seeing like what's happening with you. So I've noticed like a lot of people around me, my family members, like they got exposed to um, what I'm doing because, you know, I'm doing the healing, hypnotherapy, energy healing. And they're like, oh, wow. Laura's a whole different person <laughs> <laughs> like seriously and it, it's so crazy I was like I can't believe the person that I was before <laughs> right but but you know it's okay because that was like what I had to heal what I had to learn what I had to grow from and evolve from but people can see the shift in me and then it it's in like it's a it's like a seed that's put in their mind like oh and so when they're ready then they can come and ask me like, okay, so how do I do this? How do I, how do I be better? How do I make better choices? Cause a lot of the times we get triggered and we go back into these old habits. Um, I used to be a very jealous person, very insecure because I didn't know my own worth. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, that doesn't exist because I love myself. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, so it's like really just working on yourself makes everything better. Um, it does. So just learning to love yourself, that's the most important thing, like, in life, period. Uh, I'd love to end on that last note, but I have one more question. Do you believe that hypnotherapy is for everyone? Um, well, I believe it's for everyone who's ready. Ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, like, you are going to dive deep into these experiences that you've been holding on to granted like I've been to many different types of hypnotherapists and with the one I told you with integrative soul technology you just pull out the part that's been holding on to the pain and you figure out what the emotions are you know where, where the roots stem from and the beliefs that they're holding on to and kind of okay so so instead of these things what do you want to believe now what what energies do you want to bring in now and how do you want this part to support you now once it's fully healed and then you bring so you know then that's another part on your team but i've also you know had an experience with someone where i, I did hypnotherapy on me and like she was taking me through the actual experience and i was like i was like this is not good at all i was like <laughs> I was like, no, but granted, lucky, like I've, I've been through like those two different types of hypnotherapies, energy healing, like I was strong enough to experience that, but that isn't for everyone. Like that mm -hmm. kind of just re-traumatizes people. Yeah. So it's kind yeah. of like, um, but people don't need to go through that. They just need to heal the part that's connecting the emotions to the event. 
and kind of releasing those emotions so that event isn't triggering anymore. Um, but yeah, so it just depends on if a person is ready and um, kind of, you know, who they see because there's different types of hypnotherapy that people can do, like internal family systems mm. or the, um, the IST or... Oh, so internal family systems therapy considered a type of hypnotherapy? To me, I feel like it is because it's talking to the parts of of you, which these parts are all in your subconscious mind. Well, I didn't even think about that. You're right, because I do. I like, you know, I, I it's like I go in, you mm-hmm. know, we turn inward. Yeah. And then I do witness these experiences from the root of the feeling that I'm concerned about. Mm-hmm. So that, you, you know, I did, I've never really thought about that. I'm just like, oh, internal family systems. Oh, you know, hypnotherapy. But that that makes sense in saying that. But go ahead. I'm so, I'm oh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I really think that for people to get deeper, deeper healing, um, especially if they have a lot of trauma, because there, you know, there's different levels of trauma, right? Um, like a trauma could be, you know, a, a divorce or trauma could be like what we experienced with sexual abuse in childhood. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, to get some really deep healing, then yes, I believe that people should do hypnotherapy. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, is is there do you prepare for it or do you just dive right into it? Um, usually I well, when I do it on myself, I dive right into it. But with other people it just depends on like um like what they're healing. Uh mm-hmm. so for example, someone came to me for anger. Like I'm angry all the time. <laughs> like, mm. okay, like let's let, let's let's work to find the root cause of this anger. And then come to find out this anger, what he also experienced uh, sexual sexual abuse as a child in the same situation that I was in because of being like growing up in a drug house. Mm. So, um, so we can hold, you know, all these things expresses itself in different ways, and like his expressed in anger, and that's what the root cause was for him. So, um, yeah, it's it's just really depends on 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 what needs to be healed you know right that makes sense you know there was a point where I was like everyone should try psychedelics because I found my healing um like the root of like my healing through psychedelics and I was like everyone should try it and then it was like wait a minute maybe (laughs) not maybe not not everyone may will be so open to really diving head first into some like the darkest places of your soul so like um, me I'm down like yes let's go there (laughs) yes that's see that's where I am exactly (laughs) like I'm not and you know they we they talk about like um bad trips and and really bad trips are literally just traveling to the darkest places of your soul Mm -hmm. and but from from there that's when you find where you find the healing the deep deep healing all the stuff that's just been affecting you not even knowing it right yes exactly (laughs) like you like a lot of times where you know the way we act what we get triggered from we don't know where these things stem from. Exactly. And, and a lot of people are like, I don't know why. I don't, like people who are depressed, I don't know why I'm this way. I don't know why I feel this way. That's because it's like trapped in your subconscious mind. And it's like, I don't know if this person's ready to like be aware of what actually happened to them in their, you know, for whatever mm-hmm. experience it has. But, but yeah, like I, I went, I did like a, um, I don't know if you know Wim Hof. He, he, yes. He really, so I went to um, a Wim Hof like workshop, uh, breathing and and uh, ice bath. My first yes. time. I've never done any breathing exercises. And one guy like he like went so deep that he was fighting like demons within himself in the sense of he got up from the med- the breath meditation. It was swinging. Like, oh my goodness! He was goodness. just fighting something, and he was like unconscious. And he was just like trampling over people. So we kind of had to stop the circle. But, um, and he just left like he, you know, but that's what happens when people aren't ready to face their, their demons, you know what I mean? Face that darkness. Um, 
So yeah. it, it's kind of, you kind of got to take it in steps and kind of like know your limits, but um, kind of like how you said, oh, take me there. I'm like, you take me there too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm like, I can't go through anything worse than what I've been through. Right. I, yes. Now is uh, there's only one way to just yes. heal and it's having to dive deep. So yes. I love yeah. that. I have not tried psychedelics. So like which one specifically like, you know, helped you the most? Well, I started with MDMA. Um, mm-hmm. And the the reason why is because it, it kind of shuts off the fear, the fear um, part of your brain, the fear and anxiety of your brain. So mm. you're actually able to see all of these really horrible experiences mm-hmm. in a very compassionate way. And so for me, it was, you know, I was sexually abused by my biological father. So I was, mm. it was really hard for me to go through that. And yeah. I'm not saying I forget. I don't want to say forgive because there's so many ways to forgive or, but I had a better understanding because in my own experience, I was able to see his childhood. Yeah. So in, so I saw his childhood and I saw his abuse mm-hmm. and I wasn't angry anymore. I felt like I, I felt compassion. I was like, Oh my gosh, he didn't know better. This is all he knew. Exactly. Um, whereas before that I was just like, Oh God, he, he should have known better. He was an adult, yes, but that's yes. not the sense. That's not the reality. And so, mm-hmm. um, after that session, I let go of so mm-hmm. much anger. Like the anger, like I'm not as angry as I once was, like little things would set me off. Mm -hmm. So, um, so then I took the step up to, um, psilocybin, which magic mushrooms. And there I experienced a whole host of, um, emotions. Like I, I literally went through the cycle of all of the trapped emotions that I had in my, my system and I cried and I laughed and I, I, I mean, my sitter was probably like, whoa, I'm sure they see all <laughs> kinds of stuff, but I was just like crying hysterically, then laughing hysterically. And it was just, and in, in that release of all of the energy really made, I felt so much lighter after it. Um, nice. And then eventually I went to the LSD route and mm. um, that was, I, I, that I was able to understand patterns. Like I was understanding mm-hmm. a whole host of patterns, like, Oh, I need to break that pattern and that mm-hmm. pattern, that pattern. <laughs> um, and so it's really, really helped me. Um, but I would say, I, I would say like the psilocybin, the, the magic mushrooms under, mm-hmm. like under a guide, um, really, really helped me. Cause I never felt like, yes, I was able to get, let go of that anger, but I still had mm-hmm. some anger that was trapped in there for, you know, cause my trauma led to other trauma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And true. so I was able to, during the, the mushroom journey, I was able to get out of that, that, that real hold on to whatever anger, residual anger, that was still there. Um, and then understand it's like you said earlier, like awareness is mm-hmm. really the key to everything. And yes. I don't think there's anything that makes you more aware of like your reality versus your past reality than, you know, psychedelics, because I feel like it expands that like our realities <laughs> are our own realities <laughs> are what we, you know, what someone told us we're supposed to be growing up and our yeah. own experiences. And I think psychedelics really just cracks it open. And it's like, <laughs> this is, this is, this is what's real. There's so many realities that are out there. Mm-hmm. Um, True. so yes, um, I, I'm actually doing a documentary on, um, um, psychedelic healing following nice. me, a veteran and, um, and an athlete who, it, who has healed from traumatic brain injuries, um, from it. So, um, yes, you can, I, I mean, I think you, if you, if you go to my Instagram account, you can see if you go into the link, you'll find that there's a link to the teaser or the proof of concept of the Doc Mary that, you know, you or anyone can, can, um, take a look at. Um, and so that's what, what that's my current project. Cause I, that's I'm awesome. so passionate about it. Yeah, like, that's super cool. <laughs> I don't think I could be, I don't think I could be a sitter for psychedelics, but mm-hmm. you know, I, I can do something I can educate. And like you, you found so much healing through hypnotherapy mm-hmm. that you in turn, became a hypnotherapist. And I think once people mm-hmm. find that healing, they're like, 
how do I, how do I help other people? And I think this is, this is where we are in our journey, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. And, you know, I'm glad you brought that up about, you know, seeing your abusers, like, like how, what they went through, because that's what I realized with mine too. It's like, and it's, and it's like a generational pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Unless, unless it stops. Um, And I feel like, you know, we're the ones that are stopping it and we're shifting the whole like energy of our own lineage. Um, But yeah, like it's a lot of people don't know, like, like they try to do the best they can with what they know. And if they don't know that much, then that's, that's all they know. So exactly. I know. And it's really sad because, you know, like, there's so much wisdom in all of this. And if people just knew about these things and they could make the connections and realizations and like have compassion for those that are, you know, not doing things that people shouldn't be doing, but it's because of their own experiences. It's like hurt people, hurt people. Right. But also healed people, heal people. So here you and me are like, we done our healing and we're, we're here to, you know, spread the word of like, different ways to heal and how important it is. Absolutely. Yes. Well, Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. I feel like we, we, we covered a wide range of things and I really <laughs> love learning a lot more about hypnotherapy and realize I'm actually doing like, I guess, a form of hypnotherapy because I yeah. do feel like internal family systems. And when you mentioning that, I felt I'm like, yes, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's legit. I really, yeah. I'm finding so much healing through that as well. Um, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you. This was super fun. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad. <laughs> Well, thanks again. That was Laura Lynn, hypnotherapist, energy healer, and medical intuitive. For more information on Laura, you can click on that scrolling fortune cookie in the middle of your screen. That'll take you to her Instagram page. Also, March's issue of Authentic Insider is out. Laura has actually contributed to July 2022's issue. So if you want to go ahead and check all um, past issues out, you can go to Authentic Insider, um, check it out at traumasurvivorthriver.com. That's traumasurvivorthriver.com. And you can find um, all the issues and again, the latest issue. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my email list uh, that can be at traumasurvivorthriver.com. And you can get Authentic Insider in your magazine monthly. Again, thank you so much for being a part of the conversation. Join me next week when on March 8th when I speak with author Christine uh, McDonald. The, her, that's actually the day of her book release, Face Value, From Working the Pole to Bearing My Soul. Um, we will be discussing how some of her childhood traumas led to her becoming an adult entertainer, which eventually led her to find healing and life as an author. You've been listening to a Trauma Survivor Thrivers podcast on Fireside. I'm Laura Lee Binstock. Again, thank you for being a part of the conversation. Take care.